Hello everybody, uh, my name is Hub. I'm principal of the New York Easy Agency. And today it's my honor to be here with Mr. Daniel Wood, who has been in education industry for 35 years and who developed the international uh, student program in 15 years in the Northland School. Good morning. Um, it's, it's my pleasure to be with you and just uh, the opportunity to work and partner with you um, uh, because uh, so many times when families come uh, to Northland or even to the U.S., uh, they're looking for people they can trust. And so they're looking for agencies they can trust. They're looking for schools they can trust. So it's our pleasure to partner with you and, and uh, be in this trusting partnership with you. Thank you so much. I also know that you have been in the education industry for like 35 years already. Mm. And uh, why did you chose to be the teacher mm. and uh, educator? Mm. I think uh, you know, 35 years is a long time to be in one in one profession. I've moved uh, throughout um, my career as a you know as a teacher. I started as a teacher and then principal, assistant principal, principal, head of school, international director. So I've done all of those uh, kinds of things. Uh, part of the reason I went in uh, to education was to be in uh, a partnership with the families in in raising their children, uh, because you you know when you're not with your children, they're either at school. Or someday they're going to be at work. So uh, the partnership, uh, we, uh, we, my, my philosophy has always been we're in a relationship with families um, to help them educate their children. So um, I wanted to do that. Um, I, I wanted to teach, but I also wanted to have that relationship with families and help them because uh, you know we all know in every country education is the key to the next to the next step. It's what keeps things going. When did you start your international student program? Uh, I, I first got into an international program um, at another school um, in another state in Nebraska, and I was I was in that program in 2005 was my first year, and uh, was not I was not familiar with international education at all, and uh, actually took over a school, uh, became the head of school of a guy who had started uh, an international program. So um, he retired, and I took over for him um, with no international experience. So in 2005, I traveled to uh, Vietnam, to China, to Japan, to Korea, um, pretty much uh, all over there in Asia, and um, started to figure out what I needed to do and what I needed to learn in regards to international education. So I started in 2005. I came to Northland Christian in 2011. And in 2011 here, there was no international program. So the board asked me to start it. Um, just to part, part of the reason was <clears throat> to diversify our school. Um, and to uh, you know, just to bring that other element of, of, of Vietnamese kids, Chinese kids, kids from Mexico, Canada, Russia, um, into our school. Based on your experience, so what is the best way to study abroad in U.S.? Yeah, um, back in 2005, most of the students that were coming um, to the U.S. Uh, were coming uh, grades maybe 11, maybe grade 12. They would come for one or two years, get the U.S. diploma, and then they would go on uh, to you know to the university. But what's happened is um, more and more families are, are realizing it's better to start early because the competition to get into the universities is getting greater and greater. And so um, I believe one of the best times to come, if the families can afford it, is to come um, maybe second semester of their eighth grade year or definitely be here by ninth grade because uh, the universities are looking for uh, you know, when they look at a transcript, it's good for a student to have four years in the same school. So if a student comes from Vietnam, it's good for them to be here ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. So when the university looks at that, they're looking at one transcript and it's the GPA is all based on that one school. So the, the college isn't having to look at, you know, two years of the Vietnamese school and two years of the American school. And, and you know, how does that how does that work? I say you, you need to always want to come to the party early. Yes. You know, so if you come to the party late, your your senior year, it's going to be very hard to adapt to move into the university setting as well. So um, we've had that happen, but uh, part of that is you know there's different requirements in the U.S. to graduate from a U.S. high school. So um, I think uh, um, it's it's good to to come early. Okay. So I just say that uh, they should be here about night, right? Right. Yeah. So I just uh, make it clear right mm -hmm. here because like we have something different from education from Vietnam and from US. Correct. That the, um, the high school in Vietnam they start at ten, Great but time. from here they we start at nine. Yeah. And and I'll just say one more thing. There's sometimes what students will do is they'll finish their tenth grade year in Vietnam 
and they come and they repeat their 10th grade year here, which is not a bad idea because it helps them with their English. Yep. And it helps them with their credits because they have earned, you know, we have different credit systems. So you have to earn all of the credit. So we're seeing more and more students do that where they'll finish 10th grade in Vietnam and they come 10th grade or they'll finish 9th grade in Vietnam and then and then start here. That's another option. You think that's what is the benefit of the U.S. education? Uh, I think the benefit, uh, there, there's several of them. I think one of them is... Um, Uh, you know, you have an opportunity. Every country is different. Every education system is different. And what's very good about, you know, the U.S. education is uh, it's, uh, it's not specialized in one area. In other words, uh, in some countries, you know, students learn math and it's very, they're very deep in math, but they know nothing else about anything else. Uh, you know what I mean? They're, so it, they go deep in one area, but when it comes to history or social sciences or English, they don't go very deep. So I think in America, what happens is students can have a very broad experience. So we expect them, and we say the term, I don't know what, you know, what your term is, but the term is well-rounded. So when students are in all of these different classes, they become well-rounded. They have a better picture of the whole world. And culturally, It helps them, helps them in international business, helps them in their relationships with people from other countries. So I think that's one, that's one benefit. Um, I think the other benefit is um, to get out of your culture. You know, when uh, there was a guy named C.S. Lewis who said, um, you don't understand your own culture until you get out of it. You know, so my first trip to Vietnam, I quickly realized, wow, my culture is much different. And it allowed me to start understanding my own culture but also to understand other cultures. So I think when a student um, comes from another country to the U.S. to study, um, what happens is their eyes kind of open up and they go, oh, wow, this is completely different, and it changes them as a person. I'll give a just quick example. My daughter um, wanted to go teach in China, and so she went to China uh, you know, after high school and her university study. She went, to, she went to Beijing and taught for three years. Totally changed her. Totally changed her life. You know, the broad experience... Uh, changes their life, it, it expands their culture, expands their, their worldview. And then the other thing is I do think um, coming to America, it, it, you know, the education system is pretty good. The university system is very good. And so kids have that opportunity um, to then have the next step to go to the university. And so um, it's just become more competitive. So if you want to go to a U.S. university, um, I think you, you need to get into a U.S. high school. Um, and then, of course, beyond that, there's It allows other paths, so every student takes a different path. You know, some students will go uh, to a community college and then go to the university just because of finances. Some kids will go directly to the university. Um, so I, I think it just gives them uh, other options. There are more advantages, but those are those are three of the ones that I can think of. And I see that it's not about education only, but that the change for the student who can travel. And where we can learn from travel, mm -hmm. that we can understand more about like, our culture and the new culture. Yeah. And uh, I really appreciate that because like, uh, I'm a friendly traveler too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've, in all of the all of the areas and the countries that I've traveled to, I, I learn every time that I go. I learn something new, not only just about the country, but I learn something new about myself. That happens a lot when international students come to America. They I, I, they they've kind of been sheltered in a way. Um, in the fact that um, everything revolves around them. Yeah. And when they come to another country, they re realize it all doesn't revolve around them. It, it, makes, it makes the world a little, a little different for them. So it's kind of, like, kind of like when you go in and you get an airplane, and I get an airplane, and I think I'm a big, you know, I'm, you know, and then you get an airplane, you look down, you're like, everything's so small. <laughs> you know, and it gives me a whole different perspective of the world, that I'm just a little guy. And so I think it's good for kids to see that too. So what are the factors that parents should consider before a uh, chosen school for their children? In my 35 years, um, and I, I was in a public school as well, so I've done public school, private school, I actually homeschool. I taught my own kids for a while. So I've done all of those things. Part of the reason uh, you look at different schools, you look at them, it's hard to compare them. It's hard to compare an apple to an orange. That's the American thing, apple to an orange. It's hard to compare them because they're so different. 
But so you, you have to have some things that you can use to compare all those schools in the same way. So I call them the five P's. Actually, they're six. And so I say the first thing you want to do is you want to look at the place. You actually physically want that to look at the school. So either through a video like you're doing today or physically get there to see what does the school look like? What's the campus look like? Is it in a residential area? Is it in the downtown the city area, um, suburban, rural? Where is it? And then you want to look at you want to look at the programs and the policies. You know when does school start? How do they discipline kids? All of those kinds of things, the policies and procedures. And then you want to meet the people. Similar to what you're doing on the video, you're you're meeting a person from the school. You're hearing them. You're hearing their heart. You're not just seeing pictures of them. You're actually listening to them and what they believe, because those are the people you're going to be in partnership with the kids with your with your your kids. So um, you want to know them. And so figure out who those people are. Um, I think if, <clears throat> if possible, I think it's great for families to visit the school. I know that's not possible for everybody, but I think that's important. Um, you know, before I sent my kids, my daughter to China, I visited the school. I knew the people. I knew the principal. I was, you know, and she was 24, but I was still concerned as a parent of who she was going to be with. You know, the place, the policies, procedures, the people, the last, you know, the program, Figure out what is the program, how many AP classes do they have, do they have dual credit, do they have, um, what are their opportunities outside of the school, is there a Bible class, um, what, what's the opportunities for community service. So look at the program and look at where those kids go on to the university. Where does that program lead to? And then I say it's the sixth one. I say there's five, but there's six ones. I said, if all of those five things line up and you say, we're in line with that school, that's the school we want, then you look at the price and you figure out, can I afford it? Uh, I, I tell parents, don't just look at the price first. Look at the program um, and then figure it out from there. I'm a, I'm a tall guy. So um, when I buy a car, I don't look at the price. There's one thing the car has to have. It has to have a seat that's electric that I can slide back, that I can adjust. I don't care about all the other seats. That seat that I'm driving in, that's the comfortable spot for me. So that's what I have to have. The engine, all of that stuff. Every car's got an engine. So every school's got programs. So I look at those things, but I look at the price last. I'm like, I want to know that this thing is the right thing for me. And then I'll figure out, I'll make a way if I, if I really want that car. And so I think it's the same thing with schools. Um, look at all of those things. And then I also tell them, if at any time that your kids are at the school and one of those five things does not line up, if the pe people aren't treating your kids right, if the program isn't delivering, then you need to leave. You need to find another school that has that right program. That's why I left the school that my kids were in. I, I put them in a different, I, I homeschooled them because I wasn't happy with the program. I wasn't happy with the academics. And I said, I can do a better job of that at home. So I did. And so um, I think that's, those are the five, six things I think parents should look at. Because if you use those six things, you can compare them to every school. That's definitely a great experience yeah. and great advice. Yeah. In Northern, uh, was it the most important impact in your study program for international students? Okay. I think uh, <clears throat> there's a little difference between how American culture views uh, universities and how um, other international countries view um, universities. So some families, majority of families will say, uh, not Americans, but in other countries, they'll say, um, I want my kids to go to Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, Columbia. They really don't, they're not worried about the program or what they're going to study. They just want that degree that they can wear the badge that says graduated from Harvard. Um, America is different. In America, we want the kids to say, okay, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? What do you want to do? Where do you want to work? In what field? Do you want to be medical? Do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be a teacher? Um, do you want to be a businessman? What do you want to do? And so we approach it from that standpoint. Um, and so then we say, okay, so if that's what you want to do, how do we get you there? And let's find the right program to get you into. So it's, 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 you know, Americans, the Americans aren't worried about ranking as much as they're worried about, I want the right training. I had a family that um, I sat with the parents and I said to the parents, I said, where do you want your daughter to go to school? And they said, we want her to go to Harvard or Yale. Harvard's, Harvard's where we really want her to go. Then I asked the daughter, where do you want to go or what do you want to do when you grow up? And she said, I want to be a nurse. 
well, you don't go to Harvard just to be a nurse. You know, you go to Harvard, there's a lot of other things you do at Harvard, but not be a nurse. I mean, you can, but there's just a mismatch there. So, for example, if you want to be a nurse, there's some really good medical schools in around the U.S. University of Texas Medical School, there's, you know, Creighton University, there's University of Nebraska Med Center. There's some great universities that have Baylor. Um, there's some really good schools. What we do with our kids is, I think our one of our advantages is, Let's find out how they're wired. In other words, what are they good at? What are their interests? And then, then let's find the right school. If a student wants to be an engineer and they're good at math and they're good at science and they really want to be an engineer, then we need to find the right schools. Texas A&M, you know, University of Texas. There's some real, Laterno. There's some really good MIT. There's some really good schools and let's put them in that direction. So I think for us, um, that's one of our advantages is we really are focused on you're going to spend... 40 to 50 years of your life working. Let's get you the right training for that work. Let's don't get you the right badge, you know, because you, you could go to a school and not have the right training and it doesn't do you any good. So that's, that's one of the things that we really focus on with our kids. Which university that uh, do your students have been accepted? Okay, so we have, um, we have had students, we tell them to shoot high, okay? But shoot high for the right program. Many of our students here in Texas like to stay in Texas because Texas is a really good place to live. Low cost of living, um, you know, uh, there's just, you know, if you end up working here in Texas, you know that the, the, the income tax is lower. There's just lots of things that are nice about Texas. So a lot of our kids will want to go to the University of Texas and, and Texas A&M University. Those are very difficult to get into, even as a Texas student, even as an American student. So that's a, that's one. Baylor is another one. Uh, Baylor's a good university that that in here. Um, university of Houston is a good school. They're top you know, the top 100 for a while. Um, so we've had students get into all of those and Rice University. Rice is considered to be the Harvard of the South. So um, so we've had students get into all of those. We've had students get into Stanford, Vanderbilt. Um, we've had students get into the University of Kansas. Um, we've had uh, students get into uh, NYU. And we've had one student get into Harvard University. And so um, I don't like to start by saying we have students go to Harvard because not every student goes to Harvard. And to be honest with you, that student that went to Harvard was not one of our top students. They were a student that was, you know, top 25%, but they were not the top student, not the best test scores, not the best GPA. They were very well-rounded, and, and, and meaning they, they had done lots of things at our school. So... Harvard was looking for somebody that was well-rounded. They were looking for a student like that. This is what I tell families. If your kids come and they work hard, they do what they're supposed to do, and they listen to us and the advice we give them, they can, they can, pretty have, they can have some pretty good opportunities to go to some pretty good schools. But I think what parents have to realize is um, the competition is getting very great. So you may have to have another avenue to get there. You know, we had one girl from Vietnam, really wanted to go to UT, couldn't get into UT. So she went to a community college here in Houston, got in the honors program, and then went to UT. Graduated from UT, got her master's in business from UT. So she got the same destin, she got to the destination, just a different route. Last year, uh, the University of California, UCLA, um, they turned down 40,000 students that had perfect GPAs. Yeah, so, you know, 1.2 million students applied at the University of California system, you know, UCLA, USC, uh, UC Berkeley. So, you know, 1.2 million, your chances are pretty slim. And if you have 440,000 kids who had perfect GPAs at UCLA and were turned away, what does that tell you? The competition is very great. So you need to figure out a way and what's the best way. So we have some different things that we're, we work with kids and how to get the kids into the those those systems Um Another school that I'll mention that a lot of people don't even know about, if I said to you, what's the number one international business school in America? What's the number one international business program? You would probably say Harvard, Yale, Columbia. Um, it's the University of South Carolina. They've been number one in international business for 20 years. People don't even know that. Number two, Florida International University. And so we just had a student... Uh, just a few weeks ago from Vietnam, get into Florida International University, into the international business program. So you know, they're number two, but people don't realize that. All they think is Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, Columbia. Um, instead of going, what's the best program? Oh, the best program is University of South Carolina. Very hard to get into. People don't realize that. So 
Um, so I tell families we've had student we've had students get into all of those schools and others Purdue Rutgers um, University of Michigan. Um, so I tell them if you just look at those kids, your opportunities are great. And so when you're picking a school, you want to pick a school that shows there are opportunities. You know, everybody says, oh, I got a great school, quality education. What does that mean? That means you've got good opportunities. We're all looking for a good opportunity. You send your kids to Northland, we will help them with those opportunities. So do you have any advisor for international students? Um, I guess there's there's one thing that I would I would say, and um, you know I'm 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 an I'm an old guy who's been doing this for a long time, and I've raised three children. Um, two of them are teachers. One of them's an engineer. My wife's in education, and I have said this to all of the families um, when they send their kids to our school that um, we know what we're doing in regards to raising children. And so I always tell the families, the parents, that if you send your kids to our school, we treat them like our own kids. In other words, um, we do what you want us to do just as you would want it to be done. So if your kids are playing video games, we're going to tell them, to, you know, we're going to take that stuff away from them. We're going to discipline your kids, but we're also going to love your kids and care for them and take care of them. And so the same things that you want for your kids, we want for our kids because we're in a partnership. You don't just send them and say, hey, have a nice day. And we don't take them and say they're ours and you can't have them back. We're in a partnership. So I always tell the families, um, we're going to treat them like our own kids. And there are many instances um, that I could give specific examples to show you this is how we do it with the kids. So I like to meet the parents. And so if it's possible, I love meeting the families before they send their kids, either on video or at least in person, to talk with them. But uh, if you send them to Northland, we're going to treat them like our own. Thank you so much for uh, uh, your time, Mr. Daniel Good. Sure. And um, again, like that's not our honor to be here to work with you today. My pleasure as well. Yeah, so. thank you.